every trip has something to offer, but being able to have such a tangible impact on something, whereas like also learning about sustainability and being able to work with such a um, impactful organization like GHE and being able to meet such like wonderful people, members of the team, I think it's such an incredible opportunity that, you know, I don't think anybody is able to pass up on. I don't, I don't know how anybody has passed up on it. But. It's been um, definitely a culture shock. Um, when I arrived here, I was surprised by the landscape. Um, I don't really know what I was expecting, to be honest, but it definitely wasn't this. Um, the altitude definitely took some uh, getting used to. Um, I didn't expect it to have a big impact on me. I thought it was quite um, uh, a fit person, and I realized that I had nothing to do with that, and it affects everyone differently. I'd really like to help out my own country, I feel like it'd be really interesting to at least give back because India's given so much to me, it's such a big part of my personality, my identity. So I thought it'd be great to give back to the country that, well, gave me all of its greatness. So the reason I chose this trip was because, well, first of all, I thought that the service was extremely important. I thought, like, it would have a really significant impact on many lives and I, yeah, I wanted to be a part of that. And yes, I also thought that it would be an incredible place to come to and would really kind of take me out of my comfort zone, which I thought was an important thing to do on a PDW. We visited the monastery and I found it really special to see the young monks and then also the older monks. It was kind of like a journey. Um, so yeah, it was very like, very special. I also think above all like putting so much effort into coming on like trekking all the way over these mountains coming all the way over to Ladakh um, in such a remote space and just personally helping these people uh, put in rocket stoves and electrify monasteries it was just like it was so personal and so like genuine like the effort that we're putting in that I don't know it just felt, felt like so purposeful. the most important day because we installed all the rocket stoves we got to meet all the villagers um, they gave us tea and honestly it was such a nice experience because they were so welcoming and I just like I even gave one of them a hug because like I don't know I thought like you know 
um, they were just so, so sweet. And I loved seeing their homes. Their homes are actually very, very comfy. Like, um, it did not hurt kneeling down or assembling the rocket stove or anything. We're first starting to install the stove, it was a bit challenging and the, all, the, all the five of us were there, it was a bit overwhelming. But kind of once we all started working as a team and taking turns and going one by one, it started flowing and yeah, it worked really well and now I think next time we have to install the rocket stoves, it will go much smoother. We just finished doing our second installation of the uh, stoves and I think we're getting a little more familiar with it. Um, this time we did it mostly by ourselves um, and hopefully by the last one we'll have it down to an art. Uh, it was a really cool experience and um, uh, just really lovely to be welcomed into their homes and to giving us tea and just so hospitable and so it, yeah just really nice overall. So we've just installed the rocket stove. Uh, we took out the old stove, it was really light, uh, maybe aluminum, and put in the rocket stove, much more robust. And you can feel that there's baffles and other chambers in there where you're reburning the air, really making complete combustion, and getting the most out of the fuel. It was uh, fun to see the students install this, working on leveling it, going up on the roof and making sure everything fits and is in line with each other um, and making sure the, the, the stove's ready to use. And then we light it for the first time. We bring villagers or the, the owners of the house in and make sure that it's up to their requirements and then see if we can get it uh, running and um, get the vortex rolling. And when it gets hot, you can really hear the, the flames uh, pulling air in and getting that complete combustion and throwing out as much heat as we can. We finally got to put in the solar panels and the lighting in the Kema Village Monastery, which was really, really cool. I got to go up on the roof, install the solar panel at the top, um, which was difficult considering you have to angle it properly to the light uh, or where the sun's going to be most of the day, um, while also making sure that the solar panel isn't going to get picked up by the extremely powerful wind um, during the night or at any point during the day. Um, I also stayed after to uh, fit, finish all the lighting and the um, circuitry. It was just the most magical experience to be in the monastery with them and turn on the lights for the first time and see the, their light, their faces light up, same as the lights, the lights lit up as well. And I was just so, so happy that our work was useful and even seeing that one of the lights I had like worked on was working was just amazing, knowing that 
for a long, long time, a light that I had worked on would be working in the monastery and would be useful for the villagers. So that was definitely the highlight of the trip. Um, on the last day in the in the village and through that um, the entire school group was able to see what they had to do in order to plant their you know their own food and how it's really it's not simple and what stuck out to me was that you know I was really proud of myself for literally planting like three small broccoli um, kind of like stems or samplings and um, you know I think back to when I'm at home and I don't really I don't really think about that. I don't think about how people are growing these samplings and how uh, how special not special but how valuable they are um, to the community and it made me think about how I should reduce food waste and how I should not you know take things for granted because for some people it's not easy to have just a lot of broccoli on their plate you know they have to plant it they have to harvest it it's yeah so I think I'll definitely take that away when I get home and I'll definitely continue to think about that when I'm eating my food and also when I waste food so yeah I'll definitely think about that. Having a long day of working but seeing uh, the end product and then being able to celebrate that with the villagers was so much fun. I enjoyed seeing their culture because it was uh, like their clothing, their dancing, their music. Um, it was just amazing to see like the way that they live their lives and how they celebrate things. Um, and it was such an honor to be able to do that with them. And I think everyone had so much fun just dancing around in a circle over and over again. Um, with the music and they were just loving it and we were all having so much fun. 